<laughs> it's, all, it's all a joke. I don't know what I'm saying ever. Um, but I do know what I'm watching and sometimes what I'm watching are horror movies. And yeah. last, last week, we, we, he wasn't here, but he's here this week. And it's more, he actually, it turns out, he's, he's, he's currently in the process of retiring his horror movie a day uh, blog. And we've, now it's more, actually more timely to bring him up. So God smiled upon us, uh, booking-wise. Um, so can we bring to the stage Brian W. Collins? Is he here? Yeah. <laughs> Is he here? Maybe he's not here again. Oh, he's here. Okay. Here he is. Brian's, uh, here, you can grab one of those. Oh, yeah. Hello, Brian. Hello. Hello, Rim. I'll, uh, yeah, we, we can sit down like this. And, um, so you're, you're a longtime Armenian. I mean, you, as far as I know, you've been here since, since long before we even started podcasting. I, but I don't know. Or care. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, you, we've talked to you often and, 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 and know you as a, as a friend and that you have this blog, which I have never visited, but that I find endlessly fascinating, because, <laughs> which is a sh- surefire symptom of narcissism. Like, where you're like, oh, my friend does this really interesting thing. And I'm just like, still, though, I'm going to read this Tumblr entry about myself one more time. <laughs> And it's, and it's no wonder my brain is decaying. Like, 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 uh, it's like uh, I'm eating, eating the lead paint of my own ego. And like, 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 of, of course I'm going to die of something. Um, uh, Brian, uh, tell, us, t- t- tell us about your blog in a nutshell. And, and n- know that I'm a bad interviewer. All right. So, uh, yeah, um, just a little over six years ago, I started watching horror movies every day. And a couple weeks into it, I just decided to start writing reviews as well. I'm, that does I, it. That I just, does it. Thank you. Good night. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I started being like an editor. I never really wrote much. Um, so I just kind of figuring out how to write reviews every day. So you watch a horror movie every day? Every day. For six years? Yeah. So what's six times 365? Anybody good at math? No. No. 1,800? Is that right? Well, I mean, uh, there are days where I watch more, you know, I go to festivals and there's like four or something. So 2,500 is the mark that I'm stopping at, which is uh, Mar- March 31st. So, so first question is, how does that start? Like, 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 like at one point you noticed, you realized you were on a streak of watching one a day. Oh, yeah, no. I, uh, basically what happened was that I had rented, you know, discs from Netflix that all happened to be horror. And right. uh, they were sitting on my, like, my couch for four months and I was like looking I'm like wait I could have just bought these three movies by now this is a lot this is 2007 they didn't have wait Netflix what do you mean instant you, you bought them as opposed to what as what? opposed to paying for Netflix for three months for nothing because this is before instant so it's just the discs oh, oh okay. so it's like all right four times whatever three you know Netflix thing I'm like I could have just bought these uh, I'm like you know and then I just started thinking about my day I'm like all right you sleep for eight hours you, eight, you work for eight hours there's eight hours of the day I'm doing something why can't I just watch a horror movie right um so, and, so and, it, and, it, and it now were you single at the time? When it, when it... <laughs> no, actually, the only time I ever missed a day was like a week after I started. Uh, my wife and I took like a uh, it was our five year anniversary of dating, and we went down to uh, to Long Beach for like a four day weekend, and I missed one day then. No. <laughs> the other three days, I still watched horror movies. But uh, <laughs> so you've well, not missed uh, you've only missed one day in yeah. six years. Yeah. Wow. And uh, is it... that's why I didn't come last week because I was actually I didn't watch the movie yet. So oh really? Like, yeah. So uh, I, I got out of work and I was like, "Is it an ordeal for you? Do you still enjoy it?" Yeah. No. It's it's part of the day now. So I mean, I don't. It, it's not hard to like. I mean, every now and then things get busy, but uh, so we can assume part. you've seen Leprechaun in the Hood. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about that in a second. I want to uh, Lep in the Hood uh, uh, up to no good, uh, uh, to do no good. Uh, the the um, uh, so what 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 do you think it is about the genre? Is it is it like cheesecake? Is it like 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 is it a comfort food? Like the genre of horror as opposed to Sci-fi fantasy, as opposed to uh, Tom Cruise th- thriller, uh, is it? Is it? Is it, what? What? What is? Is there a factor? You must have thought about this sometime in six years. Well, Tom Cruise thriller day sucked. I mean, last like week. Yeah. Was, um, <laughs> no. Uh, no. I've, I've left horror since I was a little kid. Um, you know, it wasn't like I just started watching horror that day. Like I, you know, I've always right. been into it since I was like six or seven. So why? Why do we like horror I, movies? Uh, I, I think for me, I just found them the more creative because you know I always had friends that were into like doing special effects makeup, um, and you know editing and stuff like that. So to me, like you can, 
really get away with more when you're doing horror as opposed to like right. like romantic comedies where you kind of have to fit that formula. Did right. They, did they scare you? Are, are there any? Not that, since I was a kid, no. So there's, Very there's, there's not one that still gets you, gives you nightmares or anything like that? No, I mean, there was, I watched, uh, I rewatched like two years ago this TV movie that I saw when I was a kid called Don't Go to Sleep. Does anybody know that one? No. It was a TV horror. Back like when they did made-for-TV movies every week. Uh, it's about a little girl that gets possessed by the spirit of her older sister who had died in a car accident. And she blames the family, so she systematically wipes out the family. <laughs> and there's this bit where, like, she's possessed and she has a pizza cutter. And she's just, like, going up the stairs with this pizza cutter. And, like, she goes upstairs and kills her dad with it. And, like, that freaked the shit out of me when I was, like, six or seven. There's always some image. Like, yeah, I remember, yeah. So I remember now I'm afraid of pizza cutters. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like, if I open the kitchen drawer, I see you and I get scared. It's funny that <laughs> you would bring up romantic comedies as the obvious antithesis to the horror, which yeah, yeah. I think is accurate because sex, which is the ultimate creative act, you're, pro- <laughs> you're, 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 you're procreating, you're creating life. And death, which is, you know, I don't have to finish this thought. Like, 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 this, is, this is the battery that charges uh, human life. Like, 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 like we're avoiding, we're, we're afraid, we're, we're all going to die. We know that we're going to die. And we're also, like, like, driven to, like, make a life and live life. And, uh, and so, and there probably is an equal volume of, actually, I bet horror's got it, got it, got it, like, doubled or tripled. But, but like, you could watch a rom-com a day. You could try, like, like, and you wouldn't necessarily end up having a loop back on yourself. I think they might make one a day. Um, the, the, the big question is, why isn't that like a visceral like, like thing? And I think the answer has to do with the honesty level of a, of a, of a, of a society that's like high on the hog. I think that I think in a post-Spielbergian box office world, you're, you, you're just not allowed to be as creative with love as you are with death. I think that we have decided that death, because we elude it daily and, and have kind of compartmentalized it, we can actually, you can put, have Clint Howard in your movie and, and, and have him stab someone in the head with an ice cream cone and, you know, like, like, and, go, and go like, ah, what a fun way to kill that person. And here's a new way to make brains look real. And, and we're, out, we're constantly experimenting with death and encouraged to do so because we've cartoonified death because we don't actually, we've turned funeral parlors into, or, you know, the parlors of our homes into into living rooms uh, uh, and, 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 and put funeral parlors down the street and like made dead bodies, things that you bury, blah, 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 blah. And I, 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 ranting about that. But we've, we've compartmentalized death in Western society. And so like movies are like, hey, fun. It's like, whoa, imagine if his guts were flying out. Ro- <laughs> romance, however, is like, it's on these rails. It's like, 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 okay, like this guy's a bad guy because he's, you know, you, t- you, you, can't, you can't do a million fun creative things with your dick and a vagina. <laughs> That's pornography. Like, like that's not. It's it's it, it, like horror is still. It's not considered pornography, but it's like it's equally voluminous and also dealing with the primary colors of of of, of what we deal with. Like we're all scared of yeah, monsters and dying and stuff. Uh, thank you. I win. I win uh, the contest with myself to see if I can explain why horror movies are good. Uh, and they're not good. That's the other thing I wanted to ask you. You you must know more than anyone how many of them are bad because for the reasons I'm describing, any like a lot like it actually like more hacks are probably attracted to the bug lamp that is the horror genre. Well, that's I mean that's the thing is that you know unfortunately not only are there are a lot of bad movies there are you know no, no offense bad fans and that they're like you know you you guys were talking about last week the guys that like think Sharktopus and these sci-fi movies, they're funny. So you can make pretty much anything, and not only will people watch it, but it's easy to sell because, right. you know, a lot, most horror movies are independent. And it's like, oh, you killed three people in it. Cool, we can put that on the cover and, you know, sell it in Germany and sell it over here. You know, romantic comedies, all these other things, you know, that they're more star-driven. You can't, like, make, like, a low-budget rom-com and instantly get that right. sale when you go to, like, one of these film markets. So, yeah, I'll never run out of horror movies if I wasn't quitting because there's always going to be hacks that are like, eh, $10,000, look at they do paranormal yeah. activity. You know, we have a video camera in a house. We can and do so that, too. And so you have to sit and watch, like, the most yeah. horrible ones of all, which yeah. uh, you, can, you can browse through on Apple TV, and you, th- thank God for the preview feature where you can see from the trailer, like, oh, Jesus, they didn't even mix their sound. Like, like, like <laughs> it's just like rat, uh, like flies on a turd. Now, when you're done with this, when you watch 2500, are you going to be happy to not have to watch these anymore, or are you still going to continue to watch horror films? No, I mean, I'll still do stuff uh you know I, I work for a couple different websites now and like i actually might be working for netflix as like a horror expert of some sort um if anybody is it's got to be yeah. you now holy fuck so uh you know so i'll still be watching it's just like I, I, 
and the site will still be there too, and I'll update it when I feel like it. But I just won't like wake up and be like, all right, I got to find time to watch like some Children of the Corn sequel or something. Like you know, or if I start watching a movie and it's terrible. I'll be like a normal human being like you guys and shut it the fuck off. <laughs> what? Now, what's your stance on the Leprechaun a franchise? Uh, I liked the first one when I was 13. Uh, right. I think I watched one other. I watched one of the... He's gone to the hood twice. Yeah. So yeah. Well, that's... It's an interesting... Came back from space and It's an interesting thing to look at in terms of sequelogy. Yeah. Like, if there's a term paper you could write because le- everyone kind of widely will say as a knee-jerk response if you bring up the Leprechaun franchise um, that Leprechaun... I think it was three in the hood? Into hood? Uh, no, no. Uh, so three was Vegas, I think. Or two. Four was in space and then five and six were the hood. Oh, five... Oh, really? Yeah. Wait. Five... The two hoods were in a row? Are yeah. you sure about that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. He then goes then to, it's not as interesting as I thought. Oh, okay. He goes to space? Yeah, yeah he, oh, space he went to space. <laughs> he went to space. And then he comes back and goes to the hood <laughs> twice. But, but it, was, it was better when he was in the hood. And the, the reason why it was better when it was in the hood, I mean, you, could, you could tell watching the first one like, 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 like that it was like, it felt like it was written by white screenwriters. I don't know if any of this is true. Like, if everyone correct me. But this is what it felt like. I'm not, I'm not a journalist here. It felt, I kept picturing like two white screenwriters going like, you know, let's write a movie for the black people <laughs> that want to... Like, let's put the people in the theater that are always yelling that crazy stuff, let's put them in the movie and have them yell the stuff at the leprechaun. <laughs> that, that's what it felt like they were... It was, it was sort of like this weird, like, like half love, half hate, like half a racist, half, like, 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 like I, I, a cultural, like, emboldening, like, thing. It was, it was, it, 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 that's what it felt like. I, w- I hope to hear it was written by a, a wonderful black screenwriter who was, who was just... Working organically and not from a weird uh, uh, entomology uh, uh, like, uh, perspective by some guy going, "What would they like here?" I think Ice T should say what we're all thinking when we see the Leprechaun as Black America, which is "You ugly motherfucker," and then pop a cap in him. Try to pop a cap in him. Show him that the cap popping doesn't work. Show him why. They want to know. We asked them after the first two movies, like, "Why wouldn't they pop a cap?" You know, and and let's show them. Let's show them pop a cap and then have the caps pop right back out and then now you're invested and I kind of ag- I kind of agree with that philosophy I'm giving I, I, I'm giving him a weird like 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 nasal uh, uh, dialect but but uh, that might be me I, that might be how I would approach writing a leprechaun movie anyways here's here's my observation that I would like to make about the leprechaun franchise uh, here's the thing we watched like three of them for St. Patrick's Day leprechaun uh, that's his name um, uh, definitely, like, watch these movies again and, like, watch a man, like, like, like I, I, he's, he's, he, he very, very many times under a variety of circumstances ends up, uh, pretending to be a woman, uh, <laughs> to get a man horny and then killing him, like, like, right as the guy is, like, about to climax he never does the other thing he never like if he wants if he wants to just kill someone he can just rip their finger off or like he, he'll, he'll just go like mm, let me give you a leg up and then it'll just rip your leg off <laughs> so it's like weird that he sometimes then will crouch behind a crate or a bed and he'll just like a guy will be taking out the mail and then and then some a woman will go hey carl come here and it'll just be this sexy lady, and then they'll just keep cutting to the leprechaun behind the crate, going like, <laughs> and he does it over and over and over again. And it keeps, I, I think it kind of escalates. Like, I feel like the leprechaun series is about, on another level, it's about a, a, a bi curious kind of <laughs> mythical creature. Like, he's, he, you feel like he's getting more and more either honest or dishonest. I can't tell. Because one of them's about him. He wants to marry this woman, but then he keeps like, he's like, oh, I've got, I've got you here. Oh, my bride. Oh, but he never does anything with her. And then he, he keeps making excuses to go out and just pose as more women and have, have fake, fake leprechaun sex with men. You know? I don't know. Watch it. Tell, tell me what you think. Just put, you just put more thought into leprechaun sequels than any other, including I, the people that made them. It's just, the, 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 no, I, 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 well, that may be true, but, but mythology has a life of its own, and I feel the story being told with the the leprechaun character. He's like Ulysses, you know, he's, a, he's his own character. And I think that his character exists in a maelstrom of sexual feelings, you know. I, th- I, feel, I feel like he's like popping out of the, in, 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 in modern America and he's going like, oh, it seems like the standards are a bit uh, different now. Oh, what was once uh, a little weird uh, to go to as a place, like is now a little more uh, uh, okay. I, I could have a lot of fun around here. Oh, 
Oh, and he's sort of like, you're watching him like kind of push his boundaries, his own personal boundaries. Like he's getting over his own cathexes. Like there's no, there's no sign in the wall that says, don't be gay. Like, like he's, that's in his head, but he's kind of like pushing it and pushing it. Like, and he gets increasingly like more sexually amorphous as the series continues. So I think if they make another Leprechaun movie, they should just have him like naked, like, like, and just kind of like, like. They're making another one. It comes out this month. Okay. Thank you. Adam Goldberg says they're making another one. It comes out this month. I hope it's called like Leprechaun. The gloves are off. And, 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 and by gloves, we mean sexual uh, hangups, you know, and have him just have it. Maybe it's not a horror movie. Maybe it's a, maybe it's just about, you know, like, like him doing his thing. Like, like why, why have to end it uh, with a guy's face getting cut off? You know, if clearly if you look at the amount of time that's spent in each Leprechaun movie, percentage wise, it's really the more important theme in these movies is, is, is uh, bisexuality. Do they keep up with, I, I didn't watch all the, you know, all the sequels. Do they keep up with, uh, all I really remember about the first one anymore is like they stopped him by throwing shoes at him because he had a thing where he had to clean shoes. Yeah, that's the original. Yeah. Wait, wait, yeah. You, you, you've, that... watched, you've watched over 2,000 movies now? Yeah. Horror, and you, you didn't get through more than one leprechaun? <laughs> well, that's the thing. Is, I, that's I how many horror bad movies ones there that are. I know. Like, I, I know the leprechauns, are, like, especially the ones that, I mean, the first one actually played theatrically. And then, and it's with, not a, good with, a, with a child like yeah. like yeah. Jennifer Aniston. If I can make so, un- unrecognizable. If Jennifer I can make re- recommendation, I, I don't know how easy it is to do with Netflixes or Hulus or whatever's, but uh, what, at some point in my life, a friend of mine got his hands on a copy of Child's Play. It was a Mexican or it was a Spanish dub. Holly Dearest. The Spanish dub of Child's Play, and it is hilarious. It's the best fucking thing if you want to have a good time with your friends. Get Spanish Child's Play, because uh, he's just this, they, they give him this kind of Speedy Gonzalez voice that it's really. <laughs> it's really. He's just this little 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 Spanish guy running around, and it's good. Also, E.T. E.T. in Spanish is hilarious because he really is like he just sounds like like an immigrant, like an illegal alien. It's like Elliot, portate bien. <laughs> And it's like it, it takes on a different meaning. Yeah. Also, it's different, not horror. Break into, uh, bra- uh, is, that, is that Electric Boogaloo? Yeah. Uh, rent that movie. Is that the one with Turbo in it, or is that is that? Is it, yeah, Turbo. Turbo. Anytime Turbo is on, freeze frame. Because he's making the funniest face in the world. I just sent send this out there. Put it on, like, go to like send images to me. Anytime Turbo is on the camera, hit pause. Funniest shit you'll ever see in your life. Get high and watch Breaking Two and hit the hit the pause. We should we should have like 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 Oprah's book club. We could have like a we could have an assign like oh like, let's all watch before we reconvene. Let's right. all watch. We'll pick one movie that we can watch this week. Let's all watch Hard we Target. Can all talk about. We'll it. I'll talk about Wolford Brimley afterwards. <laughs> Maybe we'll pick one by the end of the show and experiment with that concept. Uh, uh, so it's 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 called horrormovieaday.com. dot yeah. com. Yeah, horrormovieaday.com. Or yeah, it's on Blogspot, but yeah. That'll it's work. on Blogspot. I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about that. <laughs> well, it's got this long, because it's Blogspot, you know, it's a URL, so it's like a whole bunch of terrible, you know, dashes and stuff. So just horrormovieday.com. It'll redirect it. you. Yeah, yeah. It'll, yeah it'll, it'll, it'll slash through your uh, y- URL and, and murder it. Um, <laughs> horrormovieaday.com. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, uh, Brian W. Collins, for visiting us on the eve of your... Thank you, Brian. He seems like an okay guy.